Hello, hello. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a sketchbook from a painting. I made this sketchbook from an old painting that I did that I had laying around that I liked, but I didn't really like as a painting. And now I love it as a sketchbook. As you can see, my sketchbooks have lots of different colored pages and they have beads on the binding as well as an elastic. So I'm going to show you exactly how I made this. I've never made a book binding tutorial before, so bear with me. I'm going to do my best. I start with my painting from the canvas and I rip it off the canvas. I usually just cut around the edges with an X-Acto blade and then peel it off. And that's what we're going to use for the cover of our book. I also like to keep these little frames around because they can be useful for stuff. I trimmed it up so it's nice and neat. And then I took two pieces of cardboard and cut them out to be the same size. I don't remember the exact size that these were, but it was enough so that they would both fit on the painting. Then I took some electrical tape, lined them up and put the electrical tape in the center, leaving a little bit of room for us to sew in the pages. I'm going to fold over the top and the bottom and just seal it so that it's all the way sealed on both sides. It's going to give us a little bit more strength on the spine when we go in and sew things to this. I like electrical tape because it's really flexible and I already have it. It's also really, really strong. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And now as you can see, we have our two pieces of cardboard connected by electrical tape. We've got the startings of a little book. We're going to take our pieces of cardboard and we're gonna lay them down onto our canvas and we're going to start attaching them to the canvas. So I just like to use regular Elmer's PVA glue and a brush and shout out if you know what I am putting my glue in, let's be friends. So we're gonna go ahead and brush the glue on with a brush on one side and then we're gonna go ahead and stick it on and then after we do that, we're gonna add glue to the second side. This is just a little bit easier. It means that your glue isn't constantly drying so it's just easier to kind of do it one side at a time. We're gonna squish that down, make sure everything is nice and flat and get our corners because a lot of times the corners don't always stick. And once it's all smoothed down and dried, we're gonna go ahead and trim the edges so that we've got about uh, an inch or so on either side, maybe a little bit less. And then I'm gonna start with the corners. So using the same PVA glue, I just put a little square of glue in the corner and fold over the corners. I have these binder clips that I use to secure them. These are custom made binder clips. I just took binder clips and attached a little bit of craft foam onto the inside with hot glue. This way they don't add any dents to the cover of my um, sketchbook as it's drying. These have lasted me for years. So if you decide you wanna make sketchbooks, then I definitely think it's worth doing that little DIY. Do all the corners, fold them in, wait for them to dry, and then we're going to come in and do the edges. I start with my short edges just because they're easier. You're going to put glue on one side, go ahead, fold it in, and then squish it down. I like to use a bone folder or a knife to really press it in there. And you kind of want to run along the edge as well so it's got a nice neat fold. As you can see, I'm kind of running it along the edge like that. And then I press it down. We're gonna put on our clippies, wait for it to dry, and then we're going to do the same to the long sides. Exact same thing, just putting on that PVA glue. I like to put it onto the canvas side so that it's the exact right shape, and then just folding it up. You can put glue on both sides, both the canvas and the cardboard if you want it to be super extra secure, but I find that this is secure enough. When you're smoothing it down, you really, really wanna make sure that you're using a lot of um, like pressure, not too much, but a pretty decent amount to really stick it down with that knife or bone folder as you're pressing down. Once it's dry, and sometimes I put it under a book to dry so that it gives it like pressure on everything, we're going to go ahead and make the end pages. So cut some pieces of scrapbook paper just a little bit smaller than either side of your sketchbook, and then I like to round my edges with a corner rounder. We're gonna go ahead and stick these onto either side of the sketchbook, but before we do that, we're going to stick a small piece of scrap cloth over the center 
part of the sketchbook to cover that electrical tape. I just cut this scrap cloth out of the remains of the canvas, put on some PVA glue on the back, stick it on, and then as you can see, I'm kind of using my knife to really get it in all those crevices. Um, and that's how we're going to secure our binding, um, our spine rather, and then we're gonna go in and add in the end pages. For the end pages, I like to put glue on the cardboard for the center, and then I hold the paper and kind of go around and put it on the edges of the paper. This I found is the easiest way to get all the edges without it drying and without getting glue everywhere. Um, so I usually do that, and then I'll kind of pick, pick up the corners a little bit. I'll like peel at the corners and make sure all the corners are fully stuck down and kind of go under and fix the corners if you need to because you want to make sure that nothing's going to peel up or come off as you're using it you really want this to be nice and sturdy so we're going to add that in really squish it down and then we're going to put it under some books and we're going to let it dry i usually like to let mine dry for about 24 hours but um, just wait until it's no longer cold now we're going to fold our pages. So I cut out a bunch of scrapbook paper and watercolor paper to the size of my sketchbook. So what you want it to be is you want it to be about the width of your sketchbook minus about a quarter of an inch. You wanna minus um, the width a little bit. You wanna make it a little bit shorter so that it doesn't stick out the edges of the book once you folded all the pages and put them in there. For the thicker pages, you may want to do a little line down the center with a scoring tool, um, which you could see me doing on some of the watercolor paper. So just make sure you get those folds nice and crisp, and then you're going to assemble them into signatures by placing, um, I usually do three sets of folded paper into one to create different signatures. I've made two signatures. That's what they look like. And now we're going to go ahead and mark everything. I take a piece of cardboard about three inches wide and the height of my paper. Now we're going to make our markings. We're going to make one marking shortly from the top. I usually about to do, do about a quarter inch. Then we're going to go down by about a half an inch. Then I usually go down by about two inches. Then I repeat the same process on the bottom. So about a quarter inch from the bottom, about a half inch from that, and then about two inches from that. And then usually the center area will be about half an inch to an inch, depending on the size of your sketchbook. So that's what it's gonna look like. Hopefully that made sense. Hopefully the visual at least helped. It's more about the proportions and the specific like inches. Um, so you just want it to look like that, have that many dots. Then you're gonna go ahead and punch right through those little holes right on that center line. And you're going to attach it using your little clip to the inside of your signatures. Now I'm using this little foam pad that I made myself. It's just a bunch of foam paper, like foam, craft foam stuck together. And then I'm keeping the signature kind of half folded while I punch straight through creating those holes. And the reason I kind of keep it half folded is it, folded is it makes sure it goes straight through the fold to the back instead of kind of getting misaligned. And I find that if you press it when it's flat, it gets misaligned. So that's why we fold the cardboard and that's why we fold everything. We're gonna take our sketchbook out from underneath our books and then we're going to take the same guide that we made before. We're gonna line it up with the end papers like where we want our sketchbook pages to be. And then we're going to take a little pastel pencil. I like to use a white pastel pencil and mark those holes. I usually would mark them vertically as well, but I'm only doing two signatures, so I'm just gonna put two holes next to each other. But if you're doing more than two signatures, mark them vertically so that they all line up as well, and then punch in your holes. You need a line of holes for each signature. So like I said, two signatures, two lines of holes, and it's going to look like this. Pretty simple. So now we're going to go in with our thread and we're going to start the binding process. I like to use just regular embroidery thread. Um, you can pretty much get it anywhere. I'm going to cut off a length. I usually do about an arm's width wide and then I'm going to wax it. So you can get beeswax um, at the store at Joann's in, in the sewing section and you just run your thread through it so that it gets waxy so that it doesn't like string apart, like come apart while you're binding. If you don't wanna do this or you don't wanna buy wax, you can just use dental floss. It's already pre-waxed, it's very strong. It works great for book binding. So always an option, but because the stitching in my books is visible, I like to use fun colored cloth or thread. Once that's done, we're going to thread it. I like to use a curved needle. You can buy these in the upholstery section at Michael's or Joann's. And you don't have to use a curved needle. I just find it a lot easier. 
we're going to tie our knot and if you twist it around like multiple times like how I just did and then pull it through then you'll have a bigger knot I learned that on Instagram so super super useful to tie a nice secure knot and then we're going to start with the sewing we're going to go in through the first hole of the signature and out through the cover then we're going to add a bead my style of binding includes beads and you have to use beads for at least this section for my style of binding. Um, uh, this is based on long stitch binding so you don't have to do it this way. If you'd like to, there's other tutorials out there by Sea Lemon is great, but mine does involve beads. So you're going to put one small bead on that thread and then you're going to go back in through the same hole and then you're going to go through the signature and out through the second hole. So you see you've gone out, back in, and then down to the second hole and out. This is where you would go down to the third hole. For me, I like to add beads on here just for decorative purposes. This is not necessary because it's not an important, like it's not part of why, how the binding stays together like the first bead, but you can add them if they're, if you want to. I don't really have any issues with putting them on there and like drawing with it. It doesn't like make it hard so yeah it's super fun I added on those beads and then went through the third hole going into the signature and pulled it nice and tight and then we're going to go back out the fourth hole so we're just kind of running straight down here I'm going to add in more beads for this second kind of longer stitch again totally optional but I think it would be really I think it's really fun so all of my sketchbooks have these beaded bindings so it's what I'm teaching you guys how to do um so add on all of those beads and then you're going to go back in into the fifth hole coming out of your signature. So hopefully this is all making sense so far. This is why I've never done a book binding tutorial. I feel like it's very difficult to explain, but I'm hoping I'm doing my best and showing you. Then you're going to come out of the very last hole going through the signature and out the um, sketchbook cover. And we're going to add on another small bead. Um, you do want these beads to be a little bit small, but that's what this binding is going to look like on the inside and on the outside. Add in a little bead, pull it all the way down, and then you're going to go back in through the same hole. The bead is important for this because when you go back in through the same hole, the bead is what stops it from pulling through the whole way. Um, so that's why I add the beads onto the binding. It just makes it a lot easier for me and I think it looks super cute as I've said a hundred thousand times. So now you're going to jump over to your next signature. You're not going to add it. You're just going to go over to the first hole of your next signature like that and go out. Then you're going to add on your next bead. You're gonna pull it straight all the way down and then you're going to take your needle and you're going to hook it around one side of the loop of thread from the first bead and then you're going to pull it through. Once you pull it through, you're going to take your needle and you're going to go back through the opposite direction that bead that you just added on. So like that, pull it through and then you're going to pull it nice and tight and go back through that second hole into the cover. So as you can see, um, it will pull nice and tight and the two beads should run up right next to each other like that. And then you go back in through that same hole. Now, this is the process for adding any signature. I'm only adding two signatures in this, but if you wanted to add a third signature, you would just repeat that process that I just told you over and over and over again until you are done. You're gonna go through now the first hole in the signature of uh, your second signature and then back out through the second hole. Now what I like to do if you're not adding beads you can just go straight down to that next hole but since I added beads I like to run my needle through the beads again so that both threads are going through the beads. This just makes the binding a little bit tighter because it adds a little bit more tension um, and I just think it looks nice and it keeps it from being too bulky by adding on too many beads going back in through the third hole and then out through the fourth hole, then running my uh, sewing needle back through the second set of beads and pulling it nice and tight. You don't want to pull too, too tight while you're working on this or else the sketchbook will like kind of ping open when you're done. Um, it can be hard to figure out the tension when you're first learning to book bind and I still don't have it perfect. So don't stress if that happens to you. That happened to me with this. I didn't make the spine big enough for this book. When, what we're going to do then is we're going to add on a bead and we're going to do the exact same process as we did at the um, bottom or whichever one we were just at. I don't know if it was the top or the bottom. So we're going to pull through, add the bead, 
hook it through, and then pull tight. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna go back through that same hole, not into the signature. Now, if you're gonna add another signature, you would just jump on over and start sewing, but we're going to tie, o tie off, so I'm just going to run my sewing needle around the, that first or bottom stitch and then pull it through into a little knot and do a little double knot. Then I am going to give it a little snip. Sometimes you can add a little glue on your knot if you're worried about it, but the wax usually keeps it pretty sealed. And that is how you bind the book. Um, if this was confusing to you, please go watch Sea Lemon. She has amazing tutorials on long stitch binding, and that is what this is a form of. Now I'm going to take an awl, which is a pointy thing. Um, it's a bigger one than the pointy thing that we used earlier. And I'm going to push in um, a big hole in the center. And normally I would do two holes, but this sketchbook is a little too small for that. So we're just gonna do one. We're gonna push through a loop of elastic and then we're gonna tie a knot at the end, at the back side, pull it nice and tight. Normally this is not the way that I do this because it does make a little lump in the center, but it was the easiest way to do it with how skinny the spine was. So adding a little glue just to make sure that that stays nice and tied since it's gonna be, have a lot of like tension on it because it's an elastic. And then I'm gonna go in and add on a little bead to the elastic. This is gonna stop it from pulling through to the other side. And I'm going to tie it off and trim the edges of that so that it looks like a little like kind of tasselly almost thing. Um, and I tie a couple knots just to make sure that the bead doesn't come off. Um, and I really just kind of give it a good tug just to make sure that the bead isn't going to come off there. Um, my first loop was a little too small to fit all around my sketchbook. So I used my awl and just put it into the knot and you can kind of push the knot upwards that way to make it a little bit like wider if you do your knot wrong. So now the elastic goes around the sketchbook, adding in a little glue to seal the elastic. And that is it. That is how I made my sketchbook from a painting. I really hope that this tutorial was helpful. I did my best to explain it clearly, but I know that I'm not always the best at that. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Um, go make a sketchbook out of your old paintings. It's really fun. All right, love you. See you in the next video. Bye.